Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of AFW. This time we're going to do something a little bit different, but before we tell you exactly what we're here for, in case you can't read the uh, the YouTube titles, let's hand it off to my co-hosts. Start us off, introduce yourself, Mr. Dave. I am your friend, your hero, your My House Sports Gear sponsored athlete, your king of the downvote, the Virgil of Retro Mania Wrestling. The Daredevil himself, the President EVP El Gigante of Breakdown, Daredevil Dave Dahl, and I welcome you to RFWF Review. Thank you for spoiling the lead that I tried to uh, build tension to. Next up, It's Jerry. in the damn title, you dude. I know I mentioned it. Come on. <clears throat> You've done it to me. It's, it's, it's your turn, you know. Yeah. All right, Jerry, I introduce you yourself. I am. That's not a real That's all he's good for. He, he, has no, he has no articulation. Yeah. Uh, I am the El Presidente of the Carnage brand, the major brawler, the wrestling figure federation podcast professor. Say that five times fast. That's right. Okay, Mike Tanay. That's right. That's what I was going for on that one. Uh, no, but you know we're. I'm here today. Uh, we're we're here to talk about this a little bit because you You're know looking pretty speedy today, Jerry. Uh, that's right. I've got the Flash <laughs> shirt on, so it's been a long day, but I'm good. And no, because, I've listened uh, to FWF you know. uh, season two. I've listened to it three times now, so I think we're I'm well versed on kind of what's happened. I watched yeah. it once and listened to it once, and I'm halfway uh, through it. Listen to it again. Uh, yeah, I'm in. The, I'm in the same boat. of listened to it three times <clears throat> today. Uh, you know, win or lose, never defeated. Uh, so I will just roll through the defeat of forgetting to introduce myself at the beginning. I am your commissioner. What? I am the peacekeeper. What? I am the zero medley. The zero miedo. I am the you commissioner are of, of AFW. I heard that one. I'll take it. It's all right. This is this is what the commissioner signs on for. This is what your middleman signs on for. A little verbal abuse here and there. I am the commissioner, Dylan Gilbert. And uh, as we've already discussed, we're here to review, lampoon, tear apart, uh, if you will, with all the love in our hearts, the first episode of season two. Before we get to that, wrestling though, federation. I just realized, Jerry, that we mm. can call Dylan Dilbert. Because his last name's Gilbert. This and his true. first name's Dylan. He is this now is known true. as Dilbert the Commissioner. We will uh, take it away, will, Dilbert. We will get our cease and desist letter in the mail. Somebody will find an address it's, for it. It's a name. It's a name. As long as it's not printed on t shirts and stuff, we're good. Yeah, as long as we don't print it on a T-shirt, or we, you know, we could have the uh, the Dilbert with like a ponytail. You know, if you I'm actually on enough. eBay right now looking for Dilbert figures for, to put one in my arena. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is the new thing. I you didn't you know laugh, I but I'm literally on eBay typing in Dilbert figures to see what I can find. Uh, I knew there was a pop. To, I'm about to draft uh, Stephen Amell because you know Eels <laughs> was awesome. Okay. I need to watch it. Watched it like way it's, off, uh, way off topic of what we're doing today. But it, yeah, is, but it was very that. good. Sorry, this, you mentioned this is so Dilbert on brand for us. It's amazing. Uh, Dilbert happened. is actually shipped. It is eleven ninety nine for a pop. Well, of that's so, uh, that's that's good to know. So guess what? Dilbert well, is going to the Carnage Arena somewhere in the background from now on. So we could uh, customize it and put a ponytail on it because it already has the glasses and everything. Yeah, just put does, the ponytail yeah. and like a little beard and then get a uh, AFW shirt on it. Just them. get like a doll and scalp it and put the hair on it. Yeah. There's okay. also Squeezies figures. I don't okay. know what that is. Okay, wait. This isn't boozing. I mean, it can be, but it's not. Because uh, <laughs> we, we are get going... this the cease letter from the guys. <laughs> we are going after another major pod network franchise we're talking about the first pay-per-views of season two of the figure wrestling federation so i figured before we dive into the <clears throat> actual shows themselves we'll start off by th- talking about this this new pay-per-view only format hey, yeah. hey. I, well so one thing i wanted to bring up is like i know that we are 
our own figure, you know, wrestling federation, figure, you know, wrestling um, brand by ourselves and stuff. And the, the reason we're, you know, we're not here to just, you know, we may have some criticism of stuff that the guy's done, but it's because we're, we're critiquing it and we're doing the review up front just because we're fans of it. And we would not be doing our own brand if we were, did not enjoy what they had done originally so much. Exactly. So, yeah, so we're not, you know, we may tear down some stuff because, you know, there's certainly some stuff to critique here and there on it. Um, yeah. But also we have a unique standpoint in that we have done this some. And so we know what it's like to sit behind the microphone and try to present a show like this. So when we're saying some stuff, you know, we kind of have a little inside baseball of what it's like to book these shows and what it's like to present them. And it's not up front. It is not as easy as what Broski would make it sound to be. Uh, he, Broski has been doing this for a long time, and he was doing it on a weekly basis um, and got very, very good at it. Um, and, you know, uh, up front, you know, this was Mark's first show. So yep. that's one thing you have to take into consideration before you even like out of the gate. You have to remember Broski is coming with a full season behind us. And this is Mark's very first outing. So, you know, there is a learning curve to this. Um, the oh, yeah, pay-per-view 100%. only, I think, hurts Mark a little bit because he's not had the, the TVs weekly to kind of find his groove and kind of get things going. He just had to jump straight into the fire, straight onto pay-per-view. Um, and I think that hurt his presentation a little bit. But I, the mark that me... we saw, the mark that we saw for uh, pay-per-view one, is not the same Mark Sterling commissioner that we're going to see for Major Fest. Oh yeah, like yeah. by I'm Major right Fest, he will have the kinks worked out, and by then, I think his storytelling approach is going to be hammered out, uh, hammer you know ironed out all the kinks and stuff in it, and I think we're really going to start to see him shine um, here within a month or two, I'd say. So yeah, my thing I mean. is though, is if they were going to do pay per view only, like you can't really build stories pay per view only. Um, so well, like not without they, like superstars to present their own stuff on social media, because you look at like what GCW is doing, like they're pay per view only, but their guys are going at each other in other promotions. They're going at each other on social media. They're, well, that's they're the indies. That's just the format of the you indies. You can't do that with an action figure podcast because you, you you don't have like Stone Cold to actually get onto like Hogan and be like, hey, you know. But they could have done it like they did the RA one. Where they had twenty minutes to present your four TVs, and then did the pay per view, mm -hmm. so that you got some kind of continuous story going through. Yeah, that's kind of what I would prefer is to have some kind of backdrop because otherwise, like you had, um, you know, just like Razor Ramon versus uh, Rock and Macho Man, which if you had you know a month's worth of build up on that. Oh my God! Would you pay twenty nine ninety nine for that? And then you hundred percent. Then you kind of hint at the House of Pain being brought together. Yes, Mark Henry would have been you, every week. You'd be like, Mark Henry just destroyed this guy. Mark Henry just destroyed this guy. And then, and then by the time you get to Mark Henry uh, on the pay per view, Mark Henry's already on it. He's already torn down through so many superstars that when he looks super strong at his pay per view, it's not a surprise. It's like this dude's here. Like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, like then you're kind of built up and stuff. So maybe that's something they can incorporate a little bit. I, um, I think, uh, you know, with all the things people have torn Mark apart about, which we'll get into more once we actually get to the uh, the shows themselves. One of the things I think he did really well was that that like last season on intro that he had. I'm, I want to say it was uh, top shelf Troy Nelson. That's it sounded like his voice. I'm an awful hop just, rope mark. It was just but, uh, long. It, it was long, but he had to incorporate it was too, an entire season. If yeah, you but could, it was if too you could spaced. Do, if, if you could do that same concept with, like, the, you know, this month on Thrill Zone, like, such and such has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, and now... But that would be fine. Which I think, you know, I think they could do a great job with. I just think, I like the concept. I'd like to see what he does with it going forward. My thing was, is the spacing of between like each segment was like he got done saying about the macho man. And then it was like three seconds space, blah, 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 blah. Like 
in an audio podcast or a video podcast, that three seconds can feel like an eternity. Yeah. So you shorten that down and you hit the you hit your points. Yeah, like, and that's, that needs to be rapid fire. And then he'll get better at that as the, yeah, he'll get better at that as it goes on and stuff. I think that was just more kind of um he does Mark does it like the way that I do. I know Dave, you like to kind of call on the fly, kind of like Matt does. Um, and that's not a skill set that I possess, and I don't think that's one that Mark possesses either. So, you know, you, you can read straight verbatim. Like, I write a script that I'm saying, you know, exactly what I'm going to say. I mean, like, I'll write, um, you know, three to four pages worth of notes per show, um, just writing out exactly what I'm going to say, and then I'll read it. But then it's just the delivery that you have to do there and stuff. And that'll get better, um, you know, the more time that he does show. It, so, so, one page. No, I, I have like four pages worth of notes. So second you know. show, <laughs> second show, one page. Yeah, and mine is written out. You know, like verbatim. Like I'm when I'm talking, I'm reading exactly what I've written out. Um, but it's just a matter of you know reading that out and then having that uh, entertaining you know delivery behind it. Thing. So, and that's you know like you talking about the spacing and stuff. You know that just he'll get better at that as he gets used to kind it of reading that verbatim spacing. and stuff. So yeah, no, it that wasn't was his spacing. It was the intro video music sound thing that spacing mm. oh yeah no because mark's spacing was on point like I, I i think you know it was just that that intro video there was a lot of you know and and what i thought was kind of funny was watching him struggle while i was watching him struggle with the music all i could see in my head was watching dave struggle with ads in the draft special and i was just like man i understand that frustration so much I, it's so real cuz like we just lived through this like a month or so ago yeah, but yeah it's one and of the that's things you just got to roll with like i was yeah, thinking exactly. jokes about it and like oh i guess we need take to pay the, the bills chops. like yeah but sometimes seeing, like, you, you know take it on the, the music chin and move thing. forward like you can have like a playlist set up, which I think Mark kind of produces and edits like some of his own music, like he did the Mark Henry, um, which then means that he's got to go to a different spot on his phone to get each soundtrack. So it's not like he's got like a playlist set up um, and can access those in easily. So that's kind of I think the issue that he ran into there. Um, well, plus, being but even in a then, hotel room like, versus your yeah, versus like so I mean, your, your your home office, where like yeah, right now I've got my cell phone, I've got my computer in front of me. You know, I've got a laptop within reach if I need to have three things going at once. Like, you're you're in a hotel room, you don't have the whole thing set up like you would be. Yeah, and I mean, like in that's another part of not having um, you know weekly TVs and stuff. If you had weeklies, you would be able to kind of. You know, week one, you would run into these kinks. And then week two, you would have a better flow about, you know, okay, I know what I need to go here real quick to get uh, Mark Henry's music ready, you know, and be ready for that by the time it's queued up to ready to but go. He moderated or like the on last a, season, so he should have been kind of prepared yeah, for but it. You know what I, I mean? think there's a difference, like, well, like I think a definite for, difference just from yeah. sitting between you two guys. Like, I, I, there's a lot of stuff that I'm preparing but you guys are preparing music. You guys are preparing your your you know your photography, your storylines, your, your your what impressions you're gonna do, what promos you're. I'm just making sure that like, all right, you guys hit the thirty minutes, you know. Yeah, you, and you I know, think that's you what didn't Mark use an illegal did figure. It's was. it's a different skill set. You're in the same pod, but it's a different skill set. It's a different thing you're accessing. Yeah. I mean, All right. But for me, I think Broski goes way too fast. Yeah. Well, because he's he's got so much to pack in. Um, he's got so much to pack in to such a short amount of time that he's got to try to make sure he gets everything in. Yeah, and sometimes the, it gets a little hard to understand what's A little bit, things. yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is why I'm kind of happy not. he made some releases that he did because – now, like, I'll be able to understand what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> so, uh, I, I've written this up, and you can't really read exactly what it says, but this segment is all the stuff that happened on Mark's show and Broski's. All right. Let's, <laughs> like, let's just, get to it. it. It felt like writing a college thesis. There was so much that happened. So, uh, we're going to dive into Thrill Zone Damnation. I'm going to... Damnation 2. Damnation 2. Which... He did not. I I listened to it after I watched it to figure this out. He did not announce it as Welcome to Damnation. He said Welcome to Thrill Zone and went right into it. So yeah, he might have said it. Is, called that's... got called out on it, and he said, "No, I said it, you assholes." He didn't. 
That, so. I mean, to be fair, that's that's like first show in that situation jitters, man. Because like I, I realized, uh, and we talked about it after our draft special went off the air. I realized that I had set the spreadsheet, I had everything ready to go, and then when you guys like, how many picks do I have left? I was like, oh crap, I forgot to number the spreadsheet, okay. and so the numbers going down the side of my Excel were not the numbers of the actual picks, and I'm having to like hurry up and calculate stuff on the fly. It happens. Like I mean, we're we're well, all human beings. It's an easy beings. fix. You just say. Throw zone presents real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's an easy There's, thing. There, it's one of those things that you don't it's think about word. until it's like it's passed and you're like, oh crap, did I do that? So so to jump in, I'll give just the uh we'll start off with just the the bullet points and then kind of give our give our thoughts on. So first thing we're gonna talk about that uh you know, the opening promo that set up the show. Uh you know, I feel like we've harped on on Mark a lot, but I think um Storyline concepts where he really thrives. I, I love the idea of this three way dance being set up the way it was. I wish we'd have actually got to see it in like come to fruition. Uh, yeah, which we'll get no, more to later. Nobody gets anything out of it, so I'm kinda glad it went down the way it did. It it makes for a cool moment though, like just to picture like you've got three of the biggest names in the sport fighting over this title. Yeah, but if you just have them in a stare down and then what happened happened, you know what I mean? Like that's still an iconic, you know, if you're taking photos, that's an iconic photo right there. Which I think that was a figure photography choice over like a podcast choice. Cause I mean, just like the figure photography of those three staring off as like your first image, I think is really cool. Um, I think, you know, obviously that he had the, the production issues, which, Lord knows we know plenty about, uh, <laughs> but I like I said I thought storyline wise I thought that you know there was it it put some interesting things on the table. Obviously some of them are going to come to fruition. We'll get into that later, but um, yeah. And so next that leads into the uh, the Mark Henry uh, Shawn Michaels match, which I think kind of to me it kind of was the, the like the short setup for what happens later on with. Mark Henry no selling those uh those sweet chin musics towards the end where he's just taking them and and just kind of kind of brushing off this finisher that's put away so many people. We're getting TV noise like crazy there, Dave. I'll turn it down in a second. I had to move. My uh, laptop's gonna die. Oh, okay. See, um, we know yeah, about this production is... issues here at AFW. <laughs> Our, 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 what is going on over here? <laughs> like, <laughs> our hearts go out to Smart Mark Sterling. We love so, you, buddy. Sorry, sorry, Colt. Sorry, Colt. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of Spider Man, you know. Green Goblin's attacking. Okay. So, so we already got uh, our appearance from Bonesaw. Yeah, that was a while. Three ago. minutes with Bonesaw. Mm, Bonesaw. You're going nowhere. Uh, Bring it on, little spider. <laughs> back on topic. <laughs> back on topic. So, this is a if if we had weekly TV, you know, we would have seen, or you know, like even some kind of TV recap, we would have seen Mark Henry destroying people left and right, um, and working his way up to you know like a big time challenger, you know, like Shawn Michaels, and then coming in here and just you know continuing his wrath of destruction against Shawn, and looking strong as ever to the point where now you're like, oh. You know, he's beaten up um, uh, who's a jobber on Thrill Zone. He's beaten up like Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer, I know he was on he was on Turmoil, not Thrill Zone. But, you know, something like that. Like, he's beaten yeah, up those yeah. caliber guys for four weeks, and now he's got a real opponent. And, you know, the buildup could be, you know, like, oh, well, he's beaten up nobody's. He can't beat, you know, Sean. And then now he just, you know, runs through Sean. And it's like, oh, oh, now it's – now he's legit. Right. You know, so now, you, you know, so that would have really where in the presentation, it kind of came out of nowhere, but I think it came out of nowhere just because we don't have the build up to it um, that we normally would have. But, you know, on point, though, I like the booking of it um, because now you're presenting and you're building this monster heel who is a threat to anybody on the roster because he just ate the finisher. Not one. He ate what? Three, three super was, kicks. Yeah, I think it was three, three or four. Kicks. He bumped on the two and then ate the third. 
Yeah, and then he and hit then him with the world's strongest slam and, and pinned him, yeah. So, and you're talking so, about you know, a finisher that's put away The Undertaker. You're talking about a finisher that retired Ric Flair. You're talking about a finisher that's, I mean, just taken so many people out. So for him oh, to no-sell. And a finisher that won the world title <laughs> at Major Fest. At Major Fest. At Major Fest. So, I mean, you know, at, so in that, um, you know, now the question would be, what do you do with Sean after this? Um, because you know Sean did just you know, know Sean, Sean can probably just go on and have. Um, I mean, you've got he could go after things like um, I know Brian did it some last year, um, Owen versus Sean. But you could go down that road again. Oh yeah, uh, and make that pretty entertaining. He'll probably wind um, up back with Scott, especially with what happened. Yeah, could go in. Yeah, yeah, and so you could have the Ringsiders back together. Was that the way they called them, the Ringsiders or the Insiders? The Insiders. 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 Not, yeah. Uh, but they also, you know, he also has Kevin Nash on. Yeah, so you've got the click set up, ready to go, and that now that when we get to the end and we talk about stuff that you know, future predictions, that could be something. It could be a lot of fun uh, going forward. Is oh, yeah, you know, and that's the the thing that we got to look at is you know, well, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> get there. So. Yeah, so, uh, that was just that's just match one. So. So this brings us to our, our second match, this uh, the Hardcore Championship match, which was – I'm trying to remember who all was in that one. I know it was, uh, it was Flair, New Jack, Bam Bam, Rodman, and the surprise entrance, Kurt Angle. Yeah. Am I See, you know, anybody? before that, you've got Foley coming out, and Foley comes out and says, um, you know, kind of like, hey, everybody, you know, this is what's going on. I kind of would have liked to seen that be the cult, the open to the show. Because yeah, okay, yeah. One of my big, I meant to do this to talk about this earlier, and I, I think I got sidetracked. But one of my main complaints is that this is a pay per view. Okay, odds are, in theory, you know, I mean, obviously it's, this is figures and stuff, but in theory, a fan would have laid down twenty nine ninety nine for this pay per view in nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight, whatever. If the matches aren't set up already, <laughs> and <laughs> Why are you spending that much money on anything? <laughs> so, but if you, if I mean, to, to so ideally the matches are set up, and, it, and I think now going forward for month two, you know, both guys at the end of it after the draft and everything, they did announce a bunch of stuff. So I think that will kind of be better um, going forward because now we kind of like okay, we know to expect, you know, Austin versus you know somebody next month, and so we're kind of can start kind of hopping up those kind of matches. From, you know, and maybe it's this is just a um, a blip, kind of like an anomaly, just because it was the first one out of the gate for season two in a new format. Well, so yeah, because what what I was going to say, just to to devil's advocate, uh, you know, this is there was there's been a six month break, and this is the yeah. first show back, and so like I, you know, you kind of have to do a little bit of housekeeping and a little bit of like, all right, well, since you know, since we've been away, um. And I think some of those matches aren't going to be booked because there is that like, oh man, like we know all the guys that are there, like what's going to happen? Yeah, well, I think the thing in is, theory. Is back in ninety seven, ninety eight, they really only hyped the main event. Everything else was mm-hmm. not always announced. Yeah, you know? I mean, like ECW would book on the fly quite a bit, but even um, WWF back in the day, day <laughs> they would. You would have like. Rock Austin in the main event, right? And then you would have like X Pac versus Val Venus at the top, but that was never announced. You only you back in the day, you only really got like your main event if it wasn't a title match, which it normally was back then. And then you got like your Intercontinental title match, your European title match, your tag title match, and then if there's some hoopla with the hardcore title, like. You just got your titles. That's it. That's the only yeah. thing that was really announced. And then they would have just filler matches like X Pac versus Val Venus. You know, if you've Gang got a, Growl versus Takama Jinoku. If like, you gotta blow off a feud or if you've got two guys that's like, hey, they haven't done much, but they could really burn it down, just send them out. Yeah. Or Squash, yeah. like Viscera versus S.A. Rios. If anybody even remembers S.A. Rios. Yeah, Papi Chulo. <laughs> So uh, we'll get back to the that hardcore championship match now. That uh, after Commissioner Foley, the big takeaway I took from that was that uh, Commissioner Foley bringing up the uh, 
with the Hardcore Championship, the champion chooses the stipulation, which will come into play later. Uh, so this becomes a just a big yeah, and there's, street fight for the Hardcore There's a lot of stuff title. you can do with that, um, depending on who the champion is, as we'll see. You know, you can go down the route that um, it's going to go down here for the next little bit for the future. Um, but I then, like, like he went, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but like, yeah. imagine if like there was a BCA like Nick Gage, you'd be like, it's a death match tonight, you know, and then yeah, it's like it's, it's having, all like, glass Rick matches. Flair. Yeah, you know, so then you got like Ric Flair having to fight Nick Gage in a death match, you know, I mean, and stuff like that, to where you can put guys in predicaments that they don't want to be in, and you know, do some good storytelling that way. So, so you end up um, with matches like Matt Cardona versus Nick Gage in a death match, where it's like. Holy crap, yeah. he's really taking light tubes. Or like Jericho actually taking a light tube on AEW. It's like Both this of those dude are is funny to me that out Matt of his element. Jericho bled more than Gage did. Yeah. Which is you know, I think a lot of that is is Gage bleeds so regularly. It's like, all right, look, you don't bleed much. Go ahead and take your blood on this one. But that's that's another death match conversation for later yeah. on for my, my new pod, Death Talk. Uh, <laughs> Death Talk, okay. Oh, starting your own brand behind our back, huh, Dylan? No, no, no. It'll be on, if, if I do this, it'll it, always Dilbert. be a part of the AFW network. I'm faithful. Damn it, Dilbert. So the, the conclusion to our hardcore championship <clears throat> match, our winner being Kurt Angle, uh, I think was, you know, it's an interesting route to go with, you know, a guy who is not known for the hardcore stuff. He's, he stepped into those matches when he's had to like the Shane McMahon match. I love that match. It's one yeah, of my favorites. Just, just listening to the behind the scenes where Kurt's like, I threw him and he bounced off that, that pane of glass and he's like, throw me again. He's like, I'm not going to do it. And he said, just throw me again. And Kurt Shane's smashes him through. Son of a bitch. He really is. So that match leads us into Owen Hart versus Mike Awesome. And for this one, they made a point of, of noting that Marlena was at ringside, kind of flashing the ticket. You know, it's it's clear that she's there for a reason, but what is the reason? And then we find out later into the match that Mike Awesome just kind of takes a finisher, looks like he barely got hit, lays down almost, and, and then just kind of rolls out and, and just takes off. And it was just a very odd, very odd finish that kind of leaves more questions and answers. Yeah. And this is going to be long-term storytelling. Like um, you watch it and you're like, Oh wait, what's, what's happening here with Mike awesome and Marlena, uh, you know, is Owen Hart involved in whatever this is? I mean, he right. wasn't directly with Marlena there, but you know, what's going on, what's, what's happening here and stuff. And we don't have the answers to that, but this is long-term storytelling. So we're going to, that's the stuff we're going to figure it out and tune back in. Yeah. That's like, the this stuff is the that kind of stuff that I really for next month. Yeah. Where it's like, oh man. And then next month, you know, say Owen Hart's out there defending his title and Marlene comes back down and somebody takes another fall. And it's like, oh wait, now we're starting to see kind of what's going on and stuff, you know? So, I just right. don't, um, how far, like, I, I, I'll wait until the second part of this comes up to say what I was okay. going to say. Because, yeah. So, to bring up the second part of what he was going to say, uh, this <laughs> leads us to the backstage segment after this match concludes, in which Kurt Angle cuts a promo stating that uh, he's not a fan of this uh, of this hardcore blood and guts style of wrestling, uh, as noted by the fact that he was completely turned off by the original ECW. I think that made it consistent. I really appreciated that. Uh, and he said that this is not going to be a hardcore title anymore. This is going to be a traditional pro wrestling title to be defended under traditional pro wrestling rules, which I thought was great. And then you bring out, uh, you know, Dr. Death to answer that call and said, you want you know, you want a real fight. You want real wrestling. I've got you next month. So I think that there's some real cool stuff you can do with two guys that were legitimized fighters in their own right. And, you know, Angle winning the Olympic gold with a broken neck. Dr. Death being known for just tearing through every bar this side of the Mississippi River. Being that dude that didn't take any crap off anybody. Mm. And then you know, lastly... In Dr. This Death segment, is also like an NCAA champion and shit too. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
he I think he gets known more for like being the the legitimate like BA bar fighter, but he was a legit, you know, he's a legit athlete. He was an NCAA champion, he was a football player, like just a tough dude. Mm-hmm. And then the last part of our backstage segment before we get deep into this is uh that you see Mike Awesome being handed a thick envelope by Bam Bam Bigelow. And uh you know, it's hard to believe that it wouldn't be tying in to what we saw earlier with Mike Awesome taking the fall. I just don't understand it because what goes down later, Bam Bam is a part of without giving it completely away. Mm. But Owen isn't. So, so like, yeah, and I think that's kind of like it's probably by it's design. head scratching. My, yeah, because my now thought is that this could be a way of like, hey, we. We want to take this title off of Owen. We're going to make sure that nobody beats Owen before we beat Owen. That's yeah, just but, the vibe that I get off the whole thing. But there's with no TVs and no animosity towards Owen, there's no reason for that unless they do something the next, you know, the next pay per view that kind of leads towards that. Otherwise, you would get to think that. Owen's joining whatever's going on. I, I mean, yeah, and maybe you know, that's by design. Is that maybe Owen is involved in it? Maybe, you know, maybe he's a higher power. But why maybe, wouldn't he? Or maybe he's just, the FWF title again. Instead, maybe of, you know, maybe they. I mean, it's a, maybe he's part of the group, and he you know has the interstate, and you you know pay off and make sure he gets the interstate belt, and you know. And but then again, help. I don't. I, it's it's hard to see a scenario where Owen's not involved in this somehow because um, Mike Awesome is involved in it at the end, isn't he? No. Is no, Mike Awesome no. not? He's not, not one of them. Not involved. No. Okay, my bad. Like I, that's why I'm wondering, like, how? What's this payoff for? Is it yeah, because so, they want to hurt Owen, or it's because they want to help Owen? Yeah. So yeah. We, so and that's a scenario. You know, that's good storytelling because now next month, you know, we're going to be watching Owen. Especially if Marlena comes down during that match, we're going to be watching and kind of seeing, oh, wait, what's about to happen here? Right, right. And then kind of start to see what's going on. But again, so that's, that's good a- storytelling by Mark because, you know, we're left with a lot of questions that we want to know the answers to, but we don't have them yet. So but they're going to, and that's going TV. to catch us to tune in a thrill zone next month. That's so. a more of a like a weekly TV kind of angle to run though. That's the only thing like maybe, but I mean it's still you know. I think when when you don't have the the weekly TVs, you have to kind of wedge those things in, and yeah. I think that's also just part of like un, you know learning this this new. So he he's taking on a new position, and then having to go into a new format. I think it it becomes one of those things that will smooth out as time passes. But I I think this whole storyline uh, that you know, and we'll get into the rest of it. Uh, in just a second, but I, I think storylines is where he's shining right now. Uh, I, you know, it's one of the big props I give to, uh, to smart Mark is I think these storylines are interesting and there's a lot that he can do with it. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to our, uh, our second to last match here. And that is, uh, LOD versus boogie nights. In this match, LOD doesn't come out with their traditional spike gear. They come out looking very stern, very serious. And uh, they wind up winning the you know, winning the tag titles and then just kind of abruptly leaving. No celebration, no big holding up the championships moment. They grab their championships and walk up the ramp. Which kind of, again, leaves more questions than answers. Not necessarily, because the sometimes they would do that LOD, though. They wouldn't always celebrate their wins, especially when they were the heels. They'd come in, beat your ass, and walk out. Like, Yeah. I mean, in, in last season for FWF, you know, they were on both brands, um, you know, beat tag teams down left and right all over the place on both brands and stuff. So I think if you're going to keep them on here, uh, because they have already done – kind of everything <laughs> over the course of, you know, six months. Um, we do need something different with them. And so this is a different LOD where they, you know, did not win uh, cleanly. You know, they cheated to win. Right. Grabbing the tights and stuff. So you got a different presentation. Um, you know, they spent the six months <laughs> in the off season uh, learning a new hold. You know, they, they learned how to hold the tights. 
That's um, right. So, and, and putting, <laughs> putting the feet on the ropes and holding the tights. Yeah. So, you know, them being heels and not just, you know, standard, like, you know, we're going to kill you heels. Now they're, they're cheating a little bit, you know, and it's something, a different way to package them. So I kind of like that about it. Uh, just because, you know, we've already seen and not, you know, like on both brands, we've already seen them come in and just kind of beat up everybody. So, uh, you got to do, if you're going to do something different with them, I, I kind of like this because it's just a different yeah. way to package them. And it's a way that we haven't seen before. So, so, yeah. you know, I kind of did like that. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely interesting. Yeah. And I think it flows pretty well into our main event for Damnation 2. This and we've got the, the Sting pay-per-view come or Sting. That's right. We we teaser in between here. Between we have a, a teaser with Sting coming to FWF, which he's already a part of. Yeah, he's he's, <laughs> he's been a part of. So it shows the said, you know, coming to Thrill Zone. So yeah, which you know, it's all kinks that'll iron out. I, I give give Mark a couple episodes. I think he's going to hit stride just fine. Oh, I'm not, it's, it was nothing against Mark. If, Bursky would have done that. I would have said the same thing. It's just oh yeah, hundred percent. It's those little nuances though that can like make and break certain things. Like that one's not that big of a deal, mm. but you're saying to the FWF. So like, what if that was a commercial bought by Broski for, you know what I mean? Like a ad spot. Like right, WWE right. does that all the time now on pay per views where a Snickers commercial plays and it's just because their people are in it. So yeah, you know. So our main event, not brought to you by Snickers, unless they want to pay us, is the uh, the three way dance that we oh, set cool. up earlier in the pay per view. Uh, and before this match even gets underway, it's interrupted by Mark Henry coming down the ramp, LOD coming out of the crowd, Bam Bam, Dennis Rodman, and Marlena is is at ringside. They kind of surround the, you know, they surround our three in the ring, and just start the beat down, which is briefly interrupted by Diesel attempting to make the save for his for his friend Scott Hall. He, you know, unsuccessful. Uh, Yokozuna comes in to attempt to save the Rock, unsuccessful. Uh, the Rock takes a, you know, world's strongest slam onto the ring steps which as mark puts it shatters his back and uh mark henry takes the microphone and announces that this is my house this is my house of pain and uh we get why does it sound like the undertaker i you know it, it just kind of <laughs> happened I, I couldn't keep the deep and the growl it just didn't happen you know some uh some impressions hit, some don't. But uh, th- <laughs> at least you is... attempted one. I attempted. Yeah, it was good. Hey, learn a new hold, you know. So, uh, and this leads into the announcement of Mark Henry challenging and getting his wish for an FWF title shot against Scott Hall at the next pay per view, as the uh, as we go to black, and the pay per view cuts. Again, yeah. this is where I wish we had TVs because this could be built so freaking well. Oh, yeah. This yeah, is one... the kind of thing that makes you wish away the entire next day so you can get to Raw the next night. Like This, oh, yeah. this yeah. is one of those storylines. It's like, holy crap, what happens next? You're sitting oh, if... in your desk at school like, is it 3 o'clock yet? That means, you know, six more hours until Raw comes on. Like, yeah. If, if we were watching a pay-per-view and the main event ended with this brand new faction – of Dennis Rodman, Bam Bam Bigelow, the Legion of Doom, and Mark Henry came out and just destroyed the main event of the pay-per-view and then announced that they were there to take over and things. That would be the talk of the wrestling world the next day. Oh, yeah. I mean, we would all be like, oh, my God, did you see this? I mean, dirt sheets would be Oh, yeah. Now, the one... Kids are running to school to talk to their friends like, did you see what Mark Henry did? He killed The Rock. Yeah. Now, I, my one nitpick about it is I wish that he would have the way that he had time left over in his presentation. So he could have worked this in. He wasn't like he was, you know, up against the clock and things. Um, I wish that he would have done the match between Rock, Scott Hall, and Macho Man and had them kind of like, because as it was, they just did their entrances and then the match didn't even get started before Mark Henry and them come out and beat everybody down but 
Well, Why I not like go that, through the, the match a little bit, and then you're building up Scott Hall as a credible champion who can fight off The Rock and Macho Man. And then you're also kind of giving that championship rub a little bit to uh, to Macho Man. Who cares about The Rock? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Real Zone doesn't care about The Rock. We, we'll get but, to that later. We'll get to Trust that. me. <laughs> but, but my thing is, is like what I liked about not having that is you didn't discredit any of them. They all That's three true, of Jim. them have stock, right? Mm-hmm. It's like if I'm on a card and I'm going against the champion and I get squashed in two minutes, why was I ever his opponent? You know what I mean? Especially if I have a name or something in that promotion. So like. You keep all their stocks up, and then, unfortunately, this is not going to happen. But you could revisit this at Major Fest, work back towards it. The Rock, Macho, and Scott Hall get rid of House of Pain, overcome them, and then you get this iconic three-way match as your main event for Major Fest. Like, yeah, and that you could would sp- be a cool long-term storyline to go around. Yeah, and there could have been little spots built up too, where you know, like, um, you know, like The Rock comes in, and then you know he he helps take out Mark Henry, and then he kind of you know looks over at Macho Man. And he's like, oh, but wait, what's that glance that he just did at Macho Man? Is that a, you know, like I'm here to help, or is that you know, I've got one eye on you because I don't trust you all the way, kind of you know, right, right, and exactly. you know, kind of long term story building like that, and then when we get to Major Fest and you have it, it's been building up inside these guys that. You know, they've been working together, but it's always been kind of contentious a little bit. You know, there's always been a little bit of animosity there that now it's ready to, you know, to go out into a big banger in the main event. So you got lust in your eyes for my oh, MWF yeah. title. I've seen it, Ogan. <laughs> but thinking, 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 you might not have my back. See, that's one of the that's one of the impressions I've got. I just got to learn Mark Henry now. I don't know Mark Henry. How do you personally Mark Henry? Like I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna retire. <laughs> I got you, suckers. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna retire, Mark Henry. Please don't go. Listen here, boy. <laughs> um, but so no, overall, I- overall thoughts about uh, Damnation Two for Thrill Zone before we move on. To Hell of a job by Mark. Yeah, I think it was very compelling. Uh, still a little head scratching on the Bam Bam Mike Awesome envelope Owen Hart thing. I guess we got to see what that plays out. I don't think that's a bad thing though. Like I think no, it's no, a bit of a head scratcher. It works in its benefit a lot because I mean, how it, how often do we as wrestling fans like, oh okay, yeah, they're doing this match because this guy's going to show up and then it's going to lead to this. It, it's nice to have a, have some booking that leaves you legitimately like, I have no clue where the hell they're going with this. Yeah, I, but again, without the TVs, it's hard to imagine how he's going to present this at the next pay per view if it's even touched on. You know what I mean? So, like, I have a feeling it will be because it seems like it's all part of the main storyline that's running through right now. But time, hopefully. time will tell. Yeah, I think Mark's got some plans for that. Um, I think he's got plans for. I'm kind of. Um, I'm interested to see, you know, kind of what happens with Kurt Angle. Um, you know, we got to remember Balls Mahoney did get his pizza smacked out of his hands, so we got to figure out <laughs> what happened there. And it looked like a delicious pizza, um, man. Something is up with Ric Flair. You know, he came out looking not like himself, and the that was, yeah, that's one thing that I noticed because Mark uh-huh. loves Ric Flair. Oh yeah, loves him. I mean, he is a huge Flair fan. So it, I cannot imagine. Rick Flair not having a prominent role in this fig fit. It, Unless that, he's it just, doing it not on a purpose throwaway to swerve line. everybody. Yeah, and, and yeah, like if Matt were to book himself, like um, in the RA fed when Matt had himself, you know, Matt kind of purposely didn't do, you know, put himself in a tag team with Kane and he kind of did some stuff there, but didn't book himself, you know, in the big role that he probably uh, might have wanted to and things. So, so you know, I, I just think that Mark has big plans for Flair and I'm kind of interested to see Oh yeah. Uh, what those are long term going forward, you know, cuz I I would have liked to have seen uh Flair and the Rock maybe kind of lead up to something there. You know, for Major Fest like work towards that long term. That could have been an interesting interesting build up. 
Um, I don't know if we'll get that, but we'll see. <laughs> you know, so who knows? But we don't really know. I don't think we we don't know the Rock's future just yet, per se. So yeah, not yeah, publicly, I, anyways. I, I have a feeling that the Rock. <laughs> I have a feeling that Rock will not be on unemployment for long, but we'll see. So, I, I think Broski's uh, Broski's laugh that we'll get to later on. I think that you know, I've got my own theories. But speaking of Broski, let's jump into Turmoil's Heat Wave, Heat Stroke, two. Heat Stroke, Heat Stroke Two. That's heat right. Wave heat is Wave ECW was pay per view. ECW pay per view. Yeah. A little too much liquid courage flowing in the uh, the commissioner's office tonight. Heat Stroke. Two, we're gonna open up with the opening promo. Stone Cold greeting his uh, his turmoil faithful. He's then interrupted by Y2J, Chris Jericho. These two look like they're gonna be setting up some sort of match when uh, Shane McMahon interrupts. Just livid with Stone Cold for the way that the last season ended. Shane says. I loved the quote. Steve, you like to drink? Well, here's a six-pack, buddy. A six-pack challenge in the main event for your FWF championship. And he promises at that point that by the end of the night, there will be a new NWO and a new FWF champion, which I, you know, I, I appreciate that kind of stuff. That felt like a Attitude Era storyline. And I think, you know, it, it just uh, if you're going to do a promo segment to open up after a six month gap, that's the way to go. Like have have your have your number one guy come out and then have this conflict thrown at him. It just it, it seems like it's going to be kind of recycling, though, for Broski. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's <laughs> that's coming up. Um but I, I agree. I kind of liked it this way to start off the pay per view. Um, you had Austin come out. The very last thing we saw was Jericho coming out. Um, which, hey, let's get, give props on that Jericho Y two J entrance music. That's actually Jericho saying that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the fact that Matt reached out and be like, "Hey, Jericho, can you say this and record it and send it to me?" And then he did it. And then uh, Billy Walter Peck of the MWO was the one who got that and put it together for Broski and and mm-hmm. and made that for him. So. Um, that, that, that's a whole another level of production that I just like when you hear the story behind it and you know that that is actually Jericho going, Jericho is turmoil. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just appreciate that. I mean, like that popped me every time I'm going to hear that. And, and I think we're going to hear it a lot. I think Jericho is going to be a prominent player here on turmoil. So, yeah. Uh, huge, but having that shout out, out to, uh, to major world order. Hey boys, have us on the pod. We can yeah, use we'll, the uh, we can use the rub if you will. <laughs> so, uh, and then having you know Shane come out and be the evil commissioner, um, you know, and be like, "I'm going to get you before the night's over," you know, and kind of set up the night uh, and an overall theme for the evening and things. I kind of like that and kind of you know strung it just things together. Me so, of Vince bringing in the NWO back a, l- in the a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If I if anybody's gonna kill it, I am. <sighs> like. Look out, NXT. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. NXT. Uh, Gone but not forgotten. <laughs> uh, I'm going to feel real bad if one of the guys down there gets released or anything like that. I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't want it to happen. So, but. But. So, I, I, I liked the way that they did that. It gave it, it gave more stakes to your main event than it just being, a you know, your, your title match between the two obviously you had you know like like jerry said the last thing you see is jericho coming out and the first thing you see is jericho interrupting stone cold it gives that which already had stakes to it but then having this like evil manager interference it just really gives you know just gives all like makes the stakes so much higher uh now that leads into we've got a triple threat for the hardcore championship which is Jeff Hardy versus Tommy Dreamer versus Taz in a match that we joined in the last 10 minutes of just glorious ladder spots. But through all of the the blood and carnage, uh, Taz retains his hardcore championship. So what did you guys think about that one? Uh, All in all, I thought, I mean, it's, it's one of those, like, 
they're coming out. You know, they're putting on an entertaining match and stuff. Uh, it's a good introduction for Jeff Hardy to kind of get him, you know, just in there. He didn't take the pinfall Dreamer did, so mm-hmm. uh, or the, you know the the submission. So yeah, the, keeps the Taz, Taz looking mission. strong. Um, so it's kind of you know it kind of just you know it sets up stuff. There's nothing really standoutish about it. I thought I mean it was well done, um, and it's got you know it had a purpose. It served its purpose. It you know brought out Jeff Hardy and made Taz look dominant still. Matt always does a good job with those plunder matches, though. So, like, yeah. so I mean, it's anything you know, that involves random are good. objects, you're good. Like, yeah, and you know, the spots kind of flowed from the, the one thing Matt Matt calling this stuff on the fly. I am always amazed um, at listening to him and knowing that he doesn't have this. I know he's rehearsed it a time or two, so he kind of has it in mm-hmm. his head, kind of how it should go. But him calling it on the fly just. He's a pro's pro, man. I mean, like, I mean, I, well, and I have so, so much detailed. respect for him. Yeah, I have so much respect for him to doing that. I mean, wait until you hear the Ring of Turmoil match on the house show coming out. All right, come on. Hey. Yeah, I mean, but it, uh, you got to stay it, it was tuned. Level. You got to stay tuned to AFW for uh, for for Dave to uh, prove that he is the superior Booker on the fly. He's already admitted it though earlier when we just started when we started this podcast. So, <laughs> so from from one match full of plunder and insanity to uh, Triple H versus China in a grudge <clears throat> match. This one goes down to uh, China winning the match, immediately being blasted from behind by Triple H, and just getting the boots put to her. Only for Eddie Guerrero to make the save for China and thus aligning the two of them. And the f- only word that comes to my head is recycled story. I, but I kind of like this, though, because... Okay, so I, I... This one to me, I mean, a little recycled maybe, but not as much as some other stuff that we would see. Right. Um, I like this, though, because this is a continuation of, you know, China and Triple H broke up at you know, officially like separated and kind of went their separate ways at major fest. So this is a continuation of that storyline. Uh, and we get the, the blow off to that. You saw China get the win. You saw triple H get his heat. And then we see Eddie get introduced to pick up China. as his mama Sita, you know, so I kind of, there's a lot happening here and I kind of liked it all. Um, and now oh, yeah. we're going to probably get, you know, Eddie versus triple H. I would imagine. Uh, um, they already announced that for the next paper. Yeah, I think yeah, I think he did. So he did. yeah, because Matt ran down the card for everything at the end. But but like for me, yes, it's a like a recycled storyline from TV. But I don't think it's gonna last that long. I think it's just a, it was the only logical way to bring in Eddie. Like yeah. the only other way you bring in Eddie is if you have him save like Ray. You know what I mean? Well, like, plus no it, it real gives way. you. It gives you a way for China to get the win so that, like, she wins the grudge match. She wins the the feud, quote-unquote. Triple H still gets his heat back by just absolutely stomping her out, walking off, and then coming back and going to do it again. And then you get a way to introduce Eddie. So, I mean, it worked for what it needed to, but that was... As soon as she started getting beat down the second time, I was immediately just like... I. Does does Matt have Eddie? I think he has Eddie, and it just you know, I think it it worked for what it needed to, and I think that's what Matt does really well is like it, you know everything is for a reason. As much as some of it may be mm-hmm. like wild, it's all for a reason. Like his his booking mind is solid. I just think it was the best way to introduce Eddie. Yeah, I, agree. I mean it works. Great way, great way for Eddie to come out and and it, and it keeps him as a singles. You don't throw him into a stable with like Ray and Billy, mm-hmm. like so. Yeah, it was definitely the better way to go about it. And I mean, because at that time period, Eddie wasn't a main event player, so you're not going to put him in the main event. Right, and introduce him that way. And like, it gives you the opportunity to put him up against Triple H and kind of work his way up the card. Yeah. So. So following that match and uh, China getting a little Latino heat, we go to a uh, backstage segment where D'Lo Brown is requesting a partner only to uh, to have the one and only Gold Dust come out and cut one of those fantastic 
uh, Matt doing the Gold Dust voice, just odd, fantastic promos. Oh, uh, dear. I'm down with Brown. Just perfect. It made oh, me it's... uncomfortable and laugh at the same time, just like a good do- Gold Dust promo. Like, great way to pair those two together. Yeah, it's an odd pairing that, like, I never knew I wanted it until it happened. <laughs> until that promo, I never knew I wanted those two to be together. And then I was like, there we go. It's Team like Brown, Goldust, Brown like gold. Goldust and yeah, Goldust and Booker T. I never knew I wanted it until we got those promos oh, that was, together. That was one of my favorite. You know, favorite oh, yeah. so, I mean, I, it, <laughs> so, I, mean I, I loved it. Uh, the promo is what sold it and made them a tag team to where um, if they were to win the tag titles – I would be happy for them and be excited. It's like when the Boogie Nines came out and everybody's dancing and stuff, you know, and then it's like, um, <laughs> so, and the promo, just because of the promo, I mean, just that one promo from Goldust right there is what sold it, you know? Yeah, it, it took it so, from being like you needed to throw another team into this this uh, Fatal 4-Way to like, oh, yeah, if these guys walk in and win this thing, I get it. I said, yeah, it I makes would be every happy every with it, so. tag team in that fatal four way would have made sense. Which, speaking of the fatal four way for the tag team titles, uh, that is our next match up, and that has the newly formed wonderful team of D'Lo and Gold Dust, the New Brood, Edge and Christian, and the Headbangers. And uh, as you know, the finish of this match being Edge and Christian. Winning the tag titles, finally getting their moment, only for Christian to turn on edge and finish his brother off with the concerto. And what was uh, it was definitely a heartbreaker for an ENC fan like myself. I think this was what Matt wanted to do to Brian after WrestleMania 35. <laughs> How I would not would be that, surprised. How crazy would that have been if that would have happened between those two at WrestleMania 35? But no, I thought it was a cool <laughs> way to separate Edge and Christian uh, and get two extra single stars versus having a tag team. Plus, you could do a little bit more with Christian and Edge separate than you can with them as a team. Like, Oh, one hundred percent! A babyface edge chasing a title—you've got so much you can do. But like, if you go and keep E and C for a while, you start recycling the five-second pose and the the band with Kurt Angle kind of stuff. Like, you're just gonna regurgitate what we've already seen. At least this way, singly, they can do a whole lot of different things. Yeah, so. you you took an established brand and you took a moment that we all wanted. And then you just blew it up and set up so many potential storylines. Like it, it had all of the right impact to it. Jerry? Yeah, I, I thought it was. You sorry, somebody, somebody you know posted a uh, posted a video of. Uh, they were at Impact taping, so they saw uh, some video from Brian versus Christian. So sorry, got distracted. Hey, uh, is that supposed to take place until this Friday? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, this is in the future. Um, <laughs> that's, that's right. We so, have access to future technology here at AFW. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought it was a great, you know, good, pretty good tag match. Um, you know, he calls all those spots again that, you know, made sense and flowed and uh, would have been a great match to watch. And then you see Edge and Christian. You know, finally, they've been searching for him since the, I think they came out like at the very first episode of Turmoil, mm-hmm. uh, trying to get these belts. So they were chasing them all last season. Uh, first pay-per-view for season two, they finally, you know, finally they get that gold. And then that son of a bitch Christian turns on edge and breaks up the team right as they finally get their why Christian? What been why? Going. Yeah, so I mean, you can just see Jr. being like, "Why Christian? Why, damn it? Why? Why'd you, why'd you do that to your brother?" Oh uh, hell! So you know, it sets up immediately. Now we go to, um, okay, you know, now now what about the tag titles? Because the champions have just, you know, one of them just laid out the other one. 
um, what does this mean for Edge and Christian going forward? You know, so you've automatically got some kind of good um, storylines going. You know, are they still the tag champions? I mean, that's as of this point, that's our question: is are the well, tag team champions just feuding with each other? How does that work? I um, I, I, I think well, I have I the answer to that question later yeah, we're, on. We're we're about to find out the answer to that. But as yeah. of that point, that was my question: was like, well, how's this going to work? You know, with the tag? Yeah, team? exactly. Uh, or fighting? How does that work? So, Eddie which then, Ray, <laughs> how, I'll have more questions. I'll have more questions here in a minute. Don't worry. So. Yeah, don't 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 worry. I like <laughs> I, I told the boys in our uh, in our group message that I felt like I was writing a college thesis, just trying to bullet point everything that happened in this. Yeah. So uh, our next match is the Interstate Championship being uh, defended by Scott Steiner versus Jeff Jarrett. Steiner retains in this match, gets on the microphone afterwards, calls for some real competition. Because, you know, he's a genetic freak. He's got to step it up. Uh, Shane McMahon comes out and tells him that you want some real competition? Here you go. We've got a champion cashing in. Turn around. Only for him to be attacked by Christian. Fresh off of just turning on his brother. Christian. Taking him out from behind winning the title and forfeiting his tag team title as part of the cash in, which just was a, was a fantastic. Holy crap moment. There was a, there was no time wasted between like Christian's turn and like, well, what's he going to do next? Here you go. But that's perfect. Cause that kind of happened with Christian when he turned in WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it at the time. And he won his first intercontinental championship. Like it was, not far after the invasion pay per view, Edge winning the King of the Ring, and that kind of stuff. So with this, you kind of just don't have Edge getting that success first. Said the roles are reversed, and Christian's getting the success before Edge does. So it's interesting to see how that's going to play out. Well, either Edge is going to get that jealousy of Christian and still kind of be a babyface with that, or if Christian's still just going to be like this, ha ha, see, look, I beat you to all this stuff kind of guy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I wanted, first off, I like the, the Jarrett Steiner match. You know, those two would have had, you know, pretty good chemistry. Um, the match was entertaining. You know, there was a bit too many, uh, spots for my taste, you know, as far as like, Oh, he's got a, he's got a new weapon and the referee takes it from him, but then he picks up this original weapon and he hits him with it, you know, and that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe a lot of you know a little bit too much gaga there with the referee and stuff, but um, don't make that, the ref look stupid. Yeah, you know, just a little bit too much like that for my taste. I don't mind him looking stupid some, but I think when you do it too many times, and um, you know, like <laughs> the referee takes away the title belt and then you smash a guitar and then he turns around and there's a broken guitar all over the place, but that's fine. So <laughs> yeah, you know, I wonder where this how guitar that get exploded there? Oh, from, from the know. ceiling. <laughs> so spontaneous wood. Oh, I guess. Uh, I, that's just a pet peeve, anyways. But you know, I thought the match yeah. itself was well done. Uh, Steiner going over was good. Steiner getting on the mic. Uh, he has to do. He is one of these guys. His matches alone are he's are not going to get over. Um, this format, you know, if it's a guy who's strong on promos, it's kind of harder to have them in it mm-hmm. because you're not doing those weekly promos. Like Steiner really shined every week where he could come out and be like, you know, Oh, Gogan, my tiger's going to get your beep, beep. You know, and like, I mean, he could have those, you know, Oh, he just said that kind of moments. And, you know, he could have a tiger come out and maul Kevin Nash. And, you know, like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> those kind of moments that he could do on a weekly basis. Um, so without a battle the, hat. Yeah. <laughs> you Shout better out to believe, Mattel. If there was weekly stuff, you better believe that Scott Steiner probably would have rode out on a saber tooth tiger one time. <laughs> I mean, so the official math professor of FWF, <laughs> yeah. Scott Steiner. Uh, so yeah, I see, you know, him getting on the mic though and cutting a promo, at least getting some of that, you know, out of the way. Um, I think if you're a work rate guy, you could kind of strive in this more than you could on a weekly basis. So like, mm-hmm. think about like an AJ Styles who is not going to have the best weekly promos, but he could come out and man, he could have a great match every pay-per-view. Um, so you could have that kind of guy in here and stuff. So, you know, yeah. for from that kind of standpoint, I get 
I get it. Um, plus now you automatically with Christian coming out and winning it, you automatically then move right past Steiner to now you open it up to edge could win the belt. Um, Eddie Guerrero, after he gets done with triple H and that feud, he could come in here, slide right in here and compete with these guys and take on that kind of stuff. So you kind of opened it up to the smaller kind of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, you've got to think Steiner versus like Eddie Guerrero. Would that be a great match? I don't know necessarily, but you know, Eddie versus Edge. Now there you go. Now, now we're talking. Work great match. Yeah. So, so I like the overall direction for it. Uh, Christian all of a sudden became, I mean, <laughs> literally like ten minutes ago in this pay per view, Christian was like over yeah. face who just a baby face who just won the tag belts with his partner and best friend. <laughs> they stabs his best friend in the back. And then comes out here and takes on this big baby face Scott Steiner and steals the belt from him. Um, and I, I didn't know that you could trade in the championship for a title opportunity, but apparently you can on turmoil. So <laughs> TNA did it with the exhibition I, title for a while. Called yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know it. So uh, I wasn't aware that was in the, the champion's clause, but there you go. B, you use option C, okay? <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, I didn't know it was a thing, and Scott Steiner didn't either. He never saw it coming, you know. So, but but I I, I like where this set up everything kind of going forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it opens up stuff quite a bit in that kind of your middle of the pack, uh, mid card division and stuff. I think it really opens up everything. So I liked it overall. Oh, definitely. I I, I will say though, Jerry, if uh, if the Steiner uh, Jeff Jarrett match was too much Gaga for you, brother, strap in. Uh, <laughs> I get. To- <laughs> Nobody does Gaga like Matt Cardona. Oh, he okay, is the nobody. god of Gaga for real. I, I love it, but you've got to. If, if Matt's in the main event or something, I know that it is not going to be a clean finish. A Gaga God is that <laughs> what Gaga you God? Call god it? of Gaga. God of Gaga. There's a new I mean, shirt like, for you, Matt. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, Gaga, all god. I ask is a free T-shirt, and it's not a bad thing. I mean, just but I know that like a clean finish is probably not what we're going to expect. Like think about uh, FWF Live. You know, when he took on VSK and, you know, a lot of shenanigans at the end of that one. Uh, think about, you know, a lot Gage. Of that, that was the, for the freaking MC True Hollywood story. They're yeah, I, Hollywood. yeah, but, I'm, but at the same True point, like, but there was a lot of, you know, a lot of, as Pat cool. Patterson would say, there's a lot of Gaga, a lot of Gaga. Who doesn't want to see a Maven drop kick, though? Come on. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't like it. I'm just look saying at, look at there the, is a lot of that, and Matt does it very well. He does it very well in real life booking. Uh, and he does it very well in FWF. So I mean, you know, well, look at look at. I'm not his, saying it's you know, bad. I'm not saying it's bad. GCW. And I'm just saying uh, he does it and he does it well. And Matt, you know, his his GCW match that you know he was a huge part of that booking on. It's like uh, you know I when pandemic started, I got into the death match in the indie scene really heavy, and I've got a Ricky Shane Page and four four zero. Uh, eight by tens on this wall and on this wall I've got Cardona and Myers because to me that just feels like it's 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 the same sport but it's it's two things that just are not anywhere close to each other and then I'm watching Ricky Shane Page set up Matt Cardona to beat Nick Gage and the thought in my in my mind at that moment was like hold on I need to wake up from this dream this doesn't feel right if anybody can do Gaga right it's it, it's Cardona that dude just knows it. He just has a he has a very good brain for the business. I mean, he's also oh, been yeah, long so, enough. Yeah. So, but we're not reviewing Matt. We're reviewing. <laughs> we're reviewing. <laughs> Let's get to the Gaga gods, Gaga. And here we, we are. are. We got to brown nose a little bit. We got to brown nose a, a little mouthful. bit. I want to get mentioned on the pod again. Gaga uh, gods, Gaga. Gaga god, yeah. So, All right, our, so uh, main, our event, main event. Time. Main event is the Stone Cold Steve Austin. Six-pack challenge for the FWF title, which we have Bret Hart, The Giant, The Undertaker, Chris Jericho, and a mystery man. Now, this personally popped me a little bit. He, You know, Kurt Angle being such a big part of the, you know, of Damnation 2, to have Kurt Angle's music hit for the mystery man and it be the Patriot uh, being proclaimed as the real American hero. And just being given just, you know, basically the, the Kurt Angle position in a lot of this, I thought was super entertaining. So we'll just hit the, we'll hit the marks and then we'll talk about this match. We have the, uh, that back and forth though with the music. So, oh it's, yeah. 
Not a it lot made... of people remember that that was the Patriots music first. Yeah. Everybody always assumes it was Kurt, so that was a real big pop. He, he yeah, did a that great was a pop job. Me too. I had to remember that. And... He did a great job of, of taking your expectation and flipping it a little bit because when it started hitting, it was like, wait a second, he doesn't have Kurt Angle. And then when he pulled up the Patriot, it was just kind of like, okay, I see what you're doing here. I'll be honest, my first thought was, oh, man, it's pay-per-view one, and we already got another Kane Gate going on. <laughs> you know, Kane like, Gate. <laughs> so. The Patriot comes out with his Olympic gold medals that he won with a broken freaking <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> now, Matt, I mean, Matt said he had, he had thought about that for the pay- – on one of his uh, 1-900 turmoils, he had said that he had thought about that as a gimmick. Um, I think somebody asked him, you know, like, what are some gimmicks that you thought about and things, and – uh, he said he thought about drafting the Patriot and having him be like Kurt Angle, mm-hmm. um, you know, like so when that, that music hit and then he came out, um, kind of as that, you know, kind of yeah, but kind of pop because eligible in the first season it wouldn't have made sense, right? Well, I mean, like you could have had, I mean, he would have been the All American, you know, hero and stuff coming out. Patriot would have so yeah, but so now it makes it, a but... lot more sense because Kurt's on the other show. So you hear that music, and you're like, wait, yeah, Kurt was just on Thrill Zone. Mm-hmm. How is right. he on turmoil? And then it's the Patriot. You're like, ah, oh, this son of got me. Yeah, exactly. I, I think he did a great job with that one. Again, the the God of Gaga, as we as we're now going to call him. Um, so to break down the match itself, I, I think he did a great job setting up uh, Patriot and and Bret Hart. So the Patriot eliminates Bret Hart after the two of these guys just absolutely go at each other for this match. Then it comes down to Patriot versus Undertaker. Kane comes out, sets off the pyro. It's actually Kane this time. He made a point to say that. Sets off the pyro, which distracts the Undertaker. Patriot eliminates Undertaker. Brett comes back out with the Canadian flag, attacks the Patriot with the flag. Chris Jericho gets the elimination via Lion Tamer on the Patriot. Stone Cold eliminates Jericho. And it comes down to Stone Cold versus the Giant. The Giant sets him up for the choke slam. Stone Cold, because no elimination, just hoofs him right in the clackers. Boot to the gut. Stone Cold stunner. And just like that, the champion retains in this chaotic match that set up probably four storylines. Which is really well done. It was yeah. A- it was a good main event to introduce most of your roster that you haven't used yet. Set up some stories to go forward with that were pretty obvious for, that you were going to go forward with. So, like, I think that was the best route he could have went with that multi-man match. Plus, it was the easiest way to make it look like Austin was actually going to be in jeopardy of losing the title. Mm-hmm. By having so many people that could beat him for it. You, you keep the stakes high, you keep the tension high, and then you still can set up multiple storylines going forward in that main event with, you know, if this is if this is an actual pay-per-view that you're paying for, this is the moment that, the, you know, nobody's walking around getting a drink, nobody's in the kitchen grabbing some more chips, like everybody is glued to the set, this is the main event, and you've set up multiple storylines going forward. I think he did a great job with that. Yeah, I thought it was very well done. Um, I mean, um, immediately you think the deck is already stacked against Austin. Um, you look at this new guy, the Patriot, who's come out at part of your roster. He looks pretty strong coming out. Um, you set up Taker and Kane. You're now setting up Bret Hart versus Patriot. Uh, Jericho looks pretty strong in the match overall. And then you've got the Giant doing the Giant thing. So, you know, yeah, I thought it, everybody kind of came out looking – pretty good here for the most part and uh and then before and then um and then there's more could uh before stone cold could catch his first ice cold steve weiser shane mcmahon comes out and says "Uh -uh." says uh i'm a man of my word i said before this night ended there was going to be a new NWO and a new FWF champion. 
He said, you want to know where the NWO is? Check behind you. Giant choke slam Stone Cold Steve Austin. Just starts beating him down. Brock Lesnar's music hits. He comes down, as as Matt put it, doing the trap thing with his traps. Comes running down. Looks like he's going to be the one to save Stone Cold. Not a chance. He starts suplexing Stone Cold repeatedly. And the, the perfect broski moment, just listening to him scream the same things over and over. I chuckled to myself listening to it th- all three times. Hulk Hogan comes down to the ring, makes on a point hog. of saying, in his red and yellow, on his hog, because nobody can have a bigger hog than me, dude. Comes on down to the ring. He's American-made. This has got to be it. He's got to be the one to save Stone Cold. Nope. He clears the ring, leg drops Stone Cold Steve Austin. Shane McMahon calls for the bell. Hogan pins Austin 1-2-3. We have a new FWF champion. We have a new NWO. And the show goes off air with Broski screaming, how could this be? While Shane McMahon throws NWO shirts to his his new lackeys, Hulk Hogan, the Giant, and Brock Lesnar, the new NWO. I mean, for me though, it's almost the same NWO. It, exactly, it kind of is, isn't it? You've, because you've, you've got I mean, a huge you're... guy, you've got giant a technical is Kevin beast. Nash. Yeah, Giant is Kevin Nash. Brock is Goldberg. And there's Hogan. And, and there's yep. Hogan. And the only so, part you're missing is X Pac. As as Mark pointed out, Hulk Hogan joining the NWO on a heel turn. How original. Yeah. And but that and like, is why Turmoil is the eco friendly brand. We are recycling. It's but it's like the same structure as the last NWO. Which was a very similar structure to the actual NWO. <laughs> but, like, if you take out Hogan, right, and you had, f- for F sakes, Bret Hart come out and be that third man, like, there's something new. Because Bret didn't join until the NWO was crappy. So, mm-hmm. but, like, there's something new. You have Chris Jericho maybe come out and join the NWO. You could have had so many different people. An NWO Patriot with a like custom black and white American mm-hmm. flag mask. Like yeah, yeah. Like, you could have yeah. had that. You, then you could have had Hogan and Austin teaming up. You know to go against this, and then you know that's something new that we haven't seen yet because all season one, Austin and Hogan were just you know. It was all from from day one, literally segment one, day one. It was them meeting and feuding um, for the sake of turmoil, you know. Right. So, so we saw them against each other. But what can happen when they're together? You, you know, been I, like the that would have been fresh. That would have been something new. Uh, instead, though, <laughs> last time for Heat Stroke, we saw or like a paper Heat Stroke one. It ended with <laughs> Hogan pinning Austin for the title with his NWO forming that night. Heat stroke two, we see Hogan pinning Austin with his NWO forming the same night. Uh, it just, it was a little bit too much. It's like, ah, just, we, we already saw it. It's like, it just, we saw it and it, we didn't just see it. We saw it done and done well. So how do you do it now when you have less time to storytell and build stuff? Uh, it just, I just would have liked to have seen something brand new from, from Matt, you know, so it's kind of just, yeah, especially when you're dealing with a guy with that kind of a booking mind. At yeah. least make him uh, the red and black. <laughs> and I think yeah, that this seriously. played, I think this played a little bit to Mark's strength, though, because since we had seen this already from Broski, and Mark is bringing brand new storylines with this brand new faction called House of Pain, and Mark Henry is a guy who's all of a sudden coming up and stuff. It makes those brand new storylines from Mark stand out so much more, right? Because we didn't see that from Broski here at the end. So the only thing I worry about with Mark and his storylines is that he's going to heavily, heavily be on just the House of Pain one. 
And that's, that's his main. Uh, that's his main one going forward. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a and fine you can get balance a, of making everything around that, and like having stuff that breaks up that monotony. Like yeah, like Torboil is gonna everything's gonna be around the NWO, and it's gonna go that way. But you're gonna have your Eddie Triple H story to break it up, you know, mm-hmm. and your different little stories to break it up. Where Marks, I think everything's gonna tie into each other. And it's just going to be one big house of pain circle. Like you're going yeah, to have a it's... you're going to have a Venn diagram, and it's going to be like one thing over here, house of pain over here, and then everything in the middle. Everything else is going to be in that middle section because everything's going to tie in the house of pains for maybe one thing. So that's where I'm worried. I just hope he doesn't get that way because then. If you think about it, then you're basically booking WCW from the Monday Night Wars, where it was just relying on the NWO. Everything was NWO. Everything was, you know, this guy just joined, so it's NWO versus WCW in this match, NWO versus WCW in that match, and it's just too well, much I, NWO. I, I think you've got a lot of promise in this uh, this Kurt Angle, you know, professional wrestling version of the hardcore title storyline. I think there's a lot of, of possibilities with that. I also think you have a shot of, of making Owen Hart, you know, one of your top guys. If he, they're doing this thing where they're, they're trying to pay people off for him. And he says like, no, I don't want this. And, and goes to war. You've, you know, you're still doing house of pain versus somebody, but it stands to set up Owen as like a potential huge baby face for you. There's, there's some, there's some things like now, now granted there's, I'm, I'm trying to be, on the pro Sterling camp here because I just, I love the dude, but there is, you know, it can just like you said, become the NWO versus WCW. But I think there is some stuff that he's got up his sleeve that could hopefully balance back out. We're just going to have to wait and see. But overall, both shows were phenomenal. I think. Oh, I I thought both were great. Um, And this was month one. You know, so we're only going to get better, and I can't wait to see what happens from both going forward. So, not if Mark keeps releasing top guys, though. <laughs> well, we'll get okay. Into let's that. let's Don't get into worry. it then. Let's get that, into uh, it then. So, this gets us into our uh, our trades, releases, and pickups. Start off, no trades. Not much of a shocker there. Everybody's still kind of getting their their rosters in order. There's not a clear, I need to get rid of this for this kind of setup yet. Uh, the thrill zone one, this is going to be quick and to the point. Thrill zone comes to the terms of release for rock. The Dwayne Johnson, who's back exploded on those ring steps and in turn picks up Jerry, the King Lawler. What? Yeah. (laughs) Look. Unless there is an Andy Kaufman figure that you can use, or somebody like Andy Kaufman, why at that time he was just he he was a fill-in guy. You're, he wasn't that main uh... eventer. He wasn't the champion of Tennessee anymore. Like, yeah, but you're not necessarily using like that version of. I mean, he can book, you know. Uh, Jerry Law or however he wants to. So I mean, I'm sure he's. I'm, I'm interested I'm sure to see Mark, what he does, but like, yeah, I'm yeah, interested yeah. to see what he does with him because the Rock is so in in Air Fed. You know, there's a few people that like. Sometimes you just can't book as well as you can others. Like um, Kenny Omega is a guy that I had before, and I had a hard time kind of booking. Breakdown him brand. Yeah, Breakdown so that's the reason like. When we went this time, you know, I didn't go for him because I was like, I just don't know what I'm going to do with him. So I, I get from that standpoint, if Mark is like, I don't know what to do with the rock, get him out. Let's just go ahead and get him out of the way of the roster. So, but at the same point, it's not, <laughs> it's not just somebody who's like a top guy. Like, okay, Drew, Drew McIntyre. I Drew might be kind of hard to book, you know, for this kind of thing. So even though he's a phenomenal talent, He's kind of, how do you book him for this? So, yeah, I can understand dropping a Drew McIntyre, but <laughs> this is The Rock. How can you yeah. not book The Rock 
<laughs> I mean, like, and this is not plus, just like, the rock. This is the rock in that, like, that '97 to early 2000s. Like, this is the rock. Yeah, he coasted the rest of his career off of what he's done in that time. Frame. It's like you already had set up. Like, the rock is now the man. Okay, he just got his ass handed to him by the House of Pain. The Rock would come out, cut some kind of scathing promo about calling them all Rudy Poo candy asses, and oh, go yeah. to war as the face of Thrill Zone against the House of Pain. If this is that Wallace would have been war. just such a slam dunk booking that we would have all loved. That's the only thing is like I, I want Mark is doing uh, for Silver Linings this week. I think he's doing one eight hundred Thrill Zone, um, which, which is his like. It's kind of numbers. No, it's the Thrill ZN or something like that. It's yeah, like, but it, thrill, the numbers work. <laughs> they work out. Somebody, whoever did it, like it works out. But Thrill is five letters. ZN. A ZN is two. And seven. That's seven. Does it work? T-H- yeah. Thr- thrill ZN. ZN. R-I-L-L-Z-N. Oh. Yeah. It works. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to... Uh, you have to it really like see it. Work piece, it. Y'all. Yeah, it's it's not. It doesn't it doesn't flow nearly as good as turmoil. But I wish they would get um, the actual numbers, and that's how you enter your questions. Like yeah. how Mark has that one for his business card. Yeah, yeah. Like record your questions, and then they just pick the best ones. Like that'd be kind of cool. Or like four four zero had that like where's Eddie only number where people would call in and they made like Twitter videos for like months where it's just like hey yeah I saw Eddie only he was down at, you know at such and such bar hitting on my mom and like they had like a whole segment of videos the the six people in the world that'll catch that one that's the for thing you. is is like so I was just looking you draft the Jerry Lawler right you could draft Brian Christopher which would be cool to see him. Teaming with Lawler and do the whole Funker not my have kid. A, uh, have no. a BCA? No, because Funk and then Chainsaw Charlie would have been one. Scott Taylor um, didn't have but a he didn't. BCA either. Funk was immediately no, where didn't. my head went, and you know, I just don't. I Rikishi don't did enough. not have a BCA unless he's in that backlash. Uh, he might KB be, but toy line. you can't have the team of too much. But, no, too, you got the Sultan, but that's the only two back. Lawler, which would be like the only way I would draft and book Lawler, is if I had too much to be his cronies. You know what now, I mean? I, one thing I thought about is, what if Lawler is coming in to help uh, Flair? You know, what if we're setting up some kind of a four horsemen scenario uh, with Flair and then Jerry Lawler kind of being like his Arn Anderson? Yeah, because if anybody would book something you know, like that, that that's that's, that's Mark's that's, territory, man. And so you know, possible. so Lawler Lawler comes in, and you know something was off about Ric Flair that first night. Lawler comes in, cuts a promo about how you know get your shit together and things, and they Buddy, have a I match. You and on TV, and that's not the man I know. Like you yeah, got to get know, it that together, kinda, and, exactly. You can and then do the uh, old dog still got it kind of yeah. storyline. So that snaps Flair out of it, you know, and then they start to form their horsemen. Uh, and kind of go out that way. So, you know, maybe something like that. I don't know. Um, I'm really interested to see Mark's reasoning for dropping the rock. Like I said, I I yeah. know from doing this that there are some people that you you pick up because you're like, oh, I got a plan for that guy, and then it just does not work out, and you realize pretty quickly I can't book this guy, and he's just going to clog up a spot on my roster. So let's clean him out for somebody who I can book and have a plan I for. So I get that part of it. But at the same point, it's The Rock. <laughs> you I, know, so dude, like, it's not just has... anybody. This is not like, uh, okay, think about it this way. He kept Balls Mahoney and he got rid of The Rock. But see, dude, so, like, not, but not balls is, he could be a job guy. Which yeah, that's true. But like, if if I had a reason to get rid of the Rock, I don't have TVs, and Rock is another promo guy, where his he promos be, are sometimes more exciting than his matchups. So if you're trying to book something exciting for the Rock and you can't do the promos, except for the usual backstage and like and just hit his normal lines, who's going to really get behind the stories of them? 
I don't know, man. I'm just uh... that's to where I would be at if I if that'd be my thinking. But I wouldn't have drafted Jerry Lawler to replace him. Like I, there's I, so many other people that you could have drafted. Like yeah, Ultimate Warrior isn't anywhere right now. Like you could have drafted he? him. Wait, see, but so everybody they both did get uh, two secret picks here as well. Right, which we so we'll uh, we'll see what that and what Matt that got is. like. I think Matt was supposed to get four. He picks, did, but he only took so or no, five, he got, and he only took four. I I'll, no, I'll he, get he to that five. one. Trust me, because yeah. I, I I had to re-listen to that segment uh, probably four times because it was just like, oh man, this feels, drop, as I'm writing it, I feel like you guys are immediately no, Matt took like five. Yeah, Matt what in the five. world? Let's so, drop. Uh, let's drop Ray and Billy just to pick Ray and Billy. Back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah. Before you know, he really before he, only got three picks because he just picked up two. That yeah, he, he dropped two guys and picked two guys. Which uh, so let's let's dive into turmoil. You know, let's came to terms. We'll just talk them all together on the release of Gangrel, Scott Steiner, Billy Kidman, Ray Mysterio, and Tommy Dreamer, which was way later. Um, that was like during the picks, uh, but then picked up Goldberg. Justin Hawk, Bradshaw, Farouk, Billy Kidman, and Rey Mysterio. So it was, uh, you know, Matt even said they didn't even have to cut the Drake Maverick crying promo. They were released and reinstated. Bang, bang. Uh, which, you know, that's so broski. But also, um, I've, I've done a few fantasy football leagues in my day. Well, and I've cut a guy because I got pissed off at like a one week performance and then gone like, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. He's got a favorable matchup next week. And then you have to sit and wait on the waiver wire claim on a guy that you had in your possession 24 hours before. So we'll you know, see what he does. I don't know. Yeah. Like you, we, now we know who he's going to drop after next month though. Oh Yeah. Oh, he's probably like, yeah. they have to be there for. They're a match. they're back for this matchup, and then they're probably cut right after that. So it's like, it's like Cena for, uh, Carnage, <laughs> working his last you know contractual <laughs> his first <laughs> and last show. first and last match. Yeah. So uh, when you guys start working on the uh, the Carnage Ring of Honor, is he like the first one for uh, first one like up for being like undefeated for his entire uh, career in Carnage? <laughs> He lose? No, he lost. Oh, that's his right. He lost. lost. His that's team right. lost. So he's he's defeated. He's not one. Oh he's man. Oh and one. So he's he's gonna o. go into the ring of shame for never yeah. winning a match. So he's he's always a big zero there. Uh. So okay. So essentially, so he dropped go uh, Gangrel, which you know you're not doing the brood anymore. Obviously, Edge and Christian already broke up. Um, yeah, but he had the new brood. Yeah. Yeah, but we brood. know that their their time is short. Probably. And uh, Gangrel didn't even go out with them for their match. He gave no, he that, was he was out, wasn't he? He gave that booking decision away. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. he no, was I out, think... but then he got like taken out pretty quick. Or something. Yeah, he got taken out like real he didn't quick do much in the match. Yeah, so, um, so that one makes sense. You know, he kind of already did a lot of stuff with Gangrel last season. Um, there's no ministry this season or anything for him to kind of hang around and do you know that kind of stuff with. So I get that. Um, Scott Steiner, I still think Steiner could have done stuff. But I get the decision to cut him um, because, you know, we, he doesn't have the weekly promos to kind of lead up. And right. Steiner is a heavy – he's not a work rate guy. He's a very, very heavy on promos kind of guy. So I and get math. that one. Uh, I'm just going to ignore yes. Kidman and Mysterio since they just, you know, kind of erased themselves and came back. Steiner uh, is and, definitely and, a smart drop, though, because you can replace agree. him with somebody yeah. that is going to give you more exciting matchups versus promos. Yeah. So. Uh, and then Dreamer going away, you know, you don't need uh, Dreamer to be like a jobber guy and stuff if you don't have TVs every week. Right, right. So I get that, whereas you're going to replace him with somebody who's going to compete and kind of be involved in storylines and stuff. So I get that. Uh, picking up Goldberg. Yeah, where he's <sighs> okay, so going. What, what, well, what's he doing? That's the thing is, okay, you've already got the NWO and you've got Brock in that Goldberg spot of the NWO. So now is Goldberg coming back to? And are we going to see Goldberg pairing up with Austin? You know, oh, to Wolfpack. take on the NWO. Um, that could be kind of fun. We never saw that before. Um, he's you know, or or does he now join the NWO? So you have Hogan, Goldberg, Brock, and Giant 
is a super faction kind of running around. So who knows? Or he could make his own end of um, too. Like yeah, <laughs> confuse yeah. it even more. Yeah, just may muck it up. Why not? NWO Gold. <laughs> NWO Goldberg. Um, <laughs> Justin Hawk Bradshaw coming in. Uh, he was a, a superstar on Real Zone, so I think you can easily slide him in. And he's a now a credible challenger to Taz for the hardcore title. Uh, Does I like he that. use the same music Brian uses, though? I don't know. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it if he did. I, I um, mean, I think that'd be smart. I would Keep probably, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, And then Farouk coming in. Uh, you know, Farouk can be coming here and stuff, and who knows, maybe you can do something with the nation. Um, you know, he, there's two secret picks out here that we don't know about. Uh, and there was a very big nation member who got dropped off a of thrill zone right before this. So I'm not Man. saying that we could hypothetically now, what if we saw some kind of a nation of domination taking on the NWO? Uh, that would be something new. Did Godfather and, have a BA, BCA as comma? Godfather did? Uh, yeah, he did. There was a two pack. It was like Dom, like comma and like D low or something, I think. So, so there you go. So you You're, could do uh, that, and you know what? That is something new. And if we do it, set that up, where now we're building towards uh, Rock and Hogan. Hey, Nation but, or, versus NWO. Or, yeah, or what if we do? Right now we're doing we're we're doing War Games two with Austin versus Hogan again. But now, what if you do? You set up now the NLD come in, the Nation comes in with the Rock. And now you've got Hogan, Rock, Austin setting up for a triple threat at Major Fest. But what down if the they road. do this too? That Cause... now that could be very cool—a triple threat between yeah. those, the three biggest icons of all time in one match for the FWF title at Major Fest in the main event. Oh, oh, oh cool. baby! Now, that's that's a way to build it up. The war and I, match. He said he's going to have one surprise person so if that's the i don't rock, remember exactly what it said yeah uh, i think if we can already smell what the, the war game is the rock what if he swerves everybody and has the rock join the nwo have like the rock take out hogan and then the rock becomes like the head of nwo he does basically hogan what he gets, did with the nation yeah yeah get farouk out get hogan out kind of becomes the leader then they kind of dissipate but maybe they don't dissipate in this sense. But like, that would be a cool kind of road to travel down. Like, you know, almost like the MJF in the Inner Circle storyline, where he's trying to take over behind Hogan's he, back, but acting like Hogan's in, best friend. Yeah, gets into drive att attempting to drive a wedge, and as soon as he realizes that won't work, then, then here comes the nation. Well, then how do I destroy? I couldn't destroy you from the inside. How do I destroy you from the outside? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that um, <laughs> I, I'm sure I, I would like to know at the end of this. Uh, I, I'm a, I mean, we just have to believe that The Rock, if you're in Matt's position and The Rock just all of a sudden lands in your lap, you have to pick him up as one of those secret picks, right? I mean, like, oh, dude, that had to if, if the rock is still a freak, pick. if the if the rock is still a secret, or still um, a free agent, and like we find out that both of Matt's secret picks were not the rock, either Matt has to believe that Mark will not go after him next month, or Matt just Mark. had nothing for him too. Mark, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, I just have to believe that you know. I can't see a scenario where Matt would just, you know, pass on him and stuff. Unless Mark grabbed him again. I mean, remember they edited it's... it if they picked anybody. Yeah, Which so it could have. I, I don't, I don't like, but I understand it builds more suspense. But I've always been more of a fan of like, all right, I put in my secret pick. Like, you can't take that guy. Having like the what? No, like the freak out. It's like it. Well, I'm pretty sure compelling. last year they did the public picks before the secret picks to avoid having to do all that. Right. So, but man. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the order for it last year. I don't remember. I have to go back and listen to him. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure secret um, picks were last. The only one that really mattered last year was uh, there was one where <laughs> I, 
I'm trying to think who was everybody going after. It was something like, oh, Matt had went for Matt picked up Gangrel, and Brian picked up Kane, and then they both were going to get the opposite one. Mm-hmm. Like in that same draft, like then Brian went to get Gangrel and got denied, and Matt went to get Kane and got denied because they both had already picked up mm-hmm. each other's picks there. So that was the one I remember really playing in and stuff there. But um, yeah, so I mean, it it's going to be the Dudleys. This this draft will be kind of interesting, um, and Matt may not be able to talk about it fully right now, just because you know. Um, there's implications for month two pretty heavily here, I'm right, sure, and right. stuff. So, so at the end of it, you know, I'll be kind of interested to hear thoughts that went into this. Um, you know, why the last minute ch- change of heart on Kidman and, and Ray Jr. You know, did, did little Dominic run up to you and be like, please don't fire my daddy? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> like what, what happened there with that? Um, that has to be know, like, odd, like, no. Oh. That era, Dominic wasn't even born yet in that era, I don't think. You're probably right. I don't think he was born. You gotta think, he was only like 8, 9, or 10. I'll do when that later. Maybe match like two or three. About it. Trying, when did Eddie die? 2005. Yeah, Dominic probably would have been born right about this time. He was probably born like but he was not 97, very... 98. Yeah, he probably would. Yeah, he wouldn't have been very. Makes me feel old as hell. He wouldn't have been running around talking probably by this point. He would have been very young. So, but anyways, so uh, uh, talking about Dominic Guerrero. But according to uh, to Wikipedia, which as we all know is the best source because anybody can edit it, uh, he was born April fifth, nineteen ninety seven. Oh, so so he would have been. Very least, you've got a toddler version of him going like, "Don't fire Dada." Yeah, but like you're not getting a fully functioning. Little you talk now. He's still wearing pull ups. Yeah. Yeah. He's not he's not potty trained at this point. So he's still but anyways, pissing uh, the floor backstage. Yeah, I would li- I'd like to see kind of, you know, My the thought copy. processes on everybody and stuff. And like I said, I'm sure Mark will go into the thought process of dropping the rock. Um, and I'm very interested to see that. Like I said, it I get it from a standpoint of like um, you've got a guy on your roster that you don't have any plans for. Uh, and you don't know how to book, you know, or don't know how to book. You just don't have anything for him going. So get him out of the way so you can get somebody in there that you do have plans for. So I, I understand that part of it. Um, but I w- would kind of wonder if there was another reason because, like I said, this is not just anybody that you have here. This is The Rock, you know. So how, you know. The the king of promos, man. Like, it, it, yeah, it's I like can, it's. I can't again, like I like said, this is, promos. Uh, you don't have TVs for him, so no. Why but do you I mean, need it's still, it's still like probably one of the. Could we say top three biggest superstars of this era? Pretty probably. easy. I mean, because you got yeah. Rock, Austin, Hogan, right? If uh, if you had to break it between so, both companies, WCW and WWE, it was Austin, Rock, Hogan. I mean, well, he's not in WWE at the time. No, I'm Austin, saying like just in wrestling Austin in general. Rock Taker. Oh yeah, yeah. Austin Hogan. Yeah, Rock. yeah, just the wrestling. Are the top three? I mean, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, and now all three of them are uh, potentially all three of them are on turmoil now. So. If Broski didn't pick up the Rock, or Mark didn't waste one of his surprise picks and pick him back, <coughs> I'd be completely shocked. Yeah, if the Rock is a free agent uh, at the end of going into month two, I'd be very surprised. Oh yeah. I, I can't see I can't see Matt uh, not going after him and letting him just sit there and and then you know or Mark not picking him back up so we'll just have to see but well, so. we've uh, we've got a lot of questions going into uh, <coughs> going into pay per view series two but uh, man I think as far as as far as uh, month one goes I think both uh, both shows hit a home run um, I, I think. You know, as much as people are going to give Mark a hard time because his energy level wasn't uh, wasn't up as much as we think it should have been, I, I think his storylines were were solid. I think he gave a lot of intrigue into where we go next, and I think uh, I think Cardona, um, I think he brought all of the 
all the fire and the yelling and the, just like the, the the raw like emotion that you want out of turmoil um some of the storylines i loved some of them i feel like we're just recycling but uh we'll see uh we'll see where it goes you know i think we've got i think we're, we're in a really interesting spot going forward yeah i'm definitely excited to see what happens uh what happens in month two and stuff going forward i mean it's definitely intriguing uh fwf is back and i'm excited for it that's right we have uh we'll have competition <laughs> so uh looking at our timer it looks like we've uh, officially gone probably 30 minutes longer than the pod we're talking about which is, uh, <laughs> which is Otis really says it's time to end this okay yeah stone cold says it's time to crack open a beer and get on out of here so uh i think four hats work so good it looks like Santa. All three of us here at uh, Action Figure Wrestling. Uh, we want you to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, hang on for what we've got coming down the uh, come down the pipeline. We've got our first house show airing shortly. We've got uh, plenty of unboxing videos, the AFW Uncaged, coming at you just as often as we possibly can. And we've got another... Uh, Another potential series coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned to the channel and just uh, keep watching content. Tell your friends, share, like, subscribe, all the other stuff YouTubers tell you to do. So uh, for the boys of AFW, goodbye, good night. Bang. Recycled. You recycled that just like someone's storyline. Just like the Turmoil brand, eco-friendly. That's why they're green. Adios, amigos.